You're rusty. We got a new bike. Let's go check it out. Come on. You like it? We're gonna open it soon. Hey, hey, what's up riders? Welcome back. So today is the day. We're finally unboxing the 52 volt Aerial Rider X-Class and we're super excited to show you what's in the box and what this bike can do. So if you're unfamiliar with the bike, I'll give you a quick rundown. It's got a 1000 watt motor capable of 2000 peak watts. It's got a 52 volt battery system capable of an estimated range of 40 to 75 miles. It's got a massive 35 amp controller. It's got adjustable front and rear shocks. It comes with a headlight and brake light stock. It even comes with pegs. So without further ado, we're excited to get rolling. We're gonna tear this box open and put this thing together. See y'all in a bit. All right, fam, welcome back. So we brought the box inside. Without further ado, I'm not gonna make y'all wait anymore because I know I've teased you enough. So we're gonna get these straps off. We're gonna get this box open and we're gonna put this thing together. And I wanna do it with the tools that come with the bike. I have my toolbox here, but I'm just gonna use it to grab a razor here we go so let's get this thing open boom 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 all right y'all we're gonna get this open as quickly as we can and if there's any aerial ride or e-bike that you're interested in remember to use the code rusty roads for 50 bucks off so let's get this thing open as quickly as possible and see what's inside This is how many staples we had to remove to get this bike out. I don't know how many it was, but it took forever. That time lapse that y'all just saw, that was just half the staples. So yeah, it took forever, but probably will take longer than it does to put the bike together, hopefully. But we're gonna pull the bike out now. I'm curious what kind of charger comes with it. If it's a higher amperage than the uh, 48 volt X-Class charger. That'd be nice. Wow, a black X-Class. So this is the first view of the X-52 in the wild. Maybe somebody else has one, but I think I'm the only person that has this bike right now. That's pretty cool. Thank you viewers and thank you Aerial Rider for sending me the bike early. So if at this point you already know that you want this bike, remember to use the code Rusty Roads, save a little bit of cash. And if you recall the specs that I mentioned earlier, a 2000 peak watt motor, 52 volt battery, 30 plus mile per hour top speed plus, a crazy range, adjustable front and rear suspension, that probably sounds very similar to another bike that costs 3,500 bucks. So like $1,400 more than this bike. This bike retails for $2,099. It's an insane value and I can't wait to ride it. So we're gonna get all this stuff off real quick 
and then we're going to see what the bike really really looks like i'm curious what the tires look like i took a peek at the tread it looks very very multi-terrain so i'm excited for that so without further ado let's take all of this off and see what the bike really looks like all right so we finally got it out this thing is beautiful seeing it in person it's like Batman's bike. If Batman had an e-bike, he'd have this one right here. It even matches his costume. So the first thing we want to do once we get it out of the box, and the first thing you definitely want to do is just check the bike over to make sure everything's okay, make sure nothing's broken, nothing's defective. Like check your rotors, make sure your rotors are okay. You want to make sure that your frame is looking good. These frames are beefy, as you all know from those over there. Those trooper bikes, those tanks, these frames are beefy. They can pretty much take anything you throw at them. But I just want to check it over. Got a derailleur guard here. Got this awesome 2000 peak watt motor. I'm excited to see what that can do on hills and acceleration. Everything looks good. Our chain looks good. Suspension looks good. Forks look good. They look nice and straight. Got our adjustable suspension here. The one in the back as well. It's got a little knob. It's got a nice satisfying click to it. And it's labeled soft and firm. So pretty self-explanatory there. No air pump or special equipment needed. You pretty much just turn that dial and set it to what feels good for you and then you're all good. And I'm assuming the same applies for the front, but We'll have another video on the suspension coming up soon, so look out for that. So the bike looks great, nothing looks damaged, everything looks perfect in my opinion. It's got the same tail light as the 48 volt X classes, which I like, and I love that tail light, so we're good with that. So let's see what's in these boxes. I know this is the headlight. I'm very, very curious if this is the same headlight as the 48 volt X class, or if it's an upgraded one. I was speaking to the owner of Aero Rider back in December or maybe January and he told me don't be surprised if you see an upgraded headlight. Hey Rusty. If you see an upgraded headlight on the X52 so we'll open this last. We're going to check out the tire and the wheel and see what's inside of the toolbox here. Toolbox. Pretty sure there's some tools in there which is pretty awesome that they give you all the tools you need to put the bike together. Rusty was just letting you know it's still his bike. Oh yeah of course. I'm just putting it together for him. I'm the chauffeur. I'm the cameraman. All right, so we still got the protective discs on the wheel here. Uh, looks like the same rotor. Wheel looks nice and black. The tires are definitely multi-terrain. That's a much, much nicer tire than what came stock on the 48 volt X-Class back when I got it. I like the reflective strip on it. And these are CSTs, I believe. Yep, CST. I'm not sure what model, but they're multi-terrain. They're mounted in the right direction, so we're good to go. Let's uh, see what these look like compared to the V tires and the Kendas. So it's a pretty similar tread pattern. I love these tires, so I'm pretty sure these are great. But yeah, we got some multi terrain tires. They're puncture resistant, not proof. No tires puncture proof, but these are puncture resistant, so that's a nice touch. And they're very, very light. This whole wheel and tire assembly is super light. All right, let's see what kind of goodies we have in here. It's not a snack, Rusty. I'm coming here thinking it's a snack. All right, so we got our toolkit. I've got two of these already. These have everything you need to put the bike together, which is awesome. And we got our pedals. Got some hardware. We've got one of these little rubber pieces that can hold wires or cables together. Got some black touch-up paint. We've got our warranty registration card. Make sure you do that. Fill that out and email it to Aerial Rider. I'm assuming this is the charger. And here we have a bell. So what do we have in here? I think the pegs are in here as well. Yep, we got our pegs. 
That's awesome. I'm going to show you how to put those on, but I'm not going to keep them on because the pegs don't clear the rack on my car, so I'll have to keep those off. But it's awesome for an e-bike to come stock with pegs of this quality. Like they raise up and they stay in place and they're nice and clicky. All right, so the charger, let's see if this is the same charger that comes with the 48 volt. I believe it is. So yeah, same charger that comes with the 48 volt X-Class. That's not a bad thing. These chargers are rated at 2.5 amps. I know the Grizzly comes with a five amp charger, but it's got two batteries, so that makes sense. So we got our charger. All right, let's see what the headlight looks like. I'm so curious. Oh, it looks like the same one. Yep, same headlight. Looks like the same bulb as well. That's not a terrible thing. These can easily be swapped out if you don't like it. But it's cool to get a headlight stock. It's nice, it's big and bright, it looks pretty good. So let's set that aside there. We'll install that shortly. All right, folks, so this is everything that's included in the toolkit. You get an 8 to 10 millimeter wrench, 12 to 14 millimeter wrench, a 13 and 15 millimeter wrench. So it seems like you get everything you need except for the 19 millimeter wrench or socket that you would need to tighten the rear wheel. So that's kind of a bummer, but I'm sure you have that around your house. If not, you definitely need that to keep that wheel tight because you want to make sure that after every 40 to 50 miles of riding, you go over your entire bike and make sure that everything is nice and tight so you're safe for your next ride. So keep that in mind. We're going to make sure we do that before we get on our first ride. And we're going to make sure that we do that every other ride so that we're good to go and we're always safe. Got to keep the kids safe. You get a cool little screwdriver that is Phillips and Flathead. You get a little multi-tool with different Allen sizes. And then the pedals are actually labeled. If you look at the pedals, there's an R and an L, so you know which side they go on. Okay, so we've got the bike flipped upside down. We're gonna get the wheel on and we're gonna get the pedals on. Now I unwrapped the handlebars and I noticed a couple differences from the 48 volt X-Class. The main one is you get a half twist throttle now, which is pretty cool. And another thing I noticed, it has the new Shimano shifter that the Grizzly has. So I'm curious how this works. It looks a little nicer. It looks much easier to click. It looks pretty good. So I'm excited to see how all of this works. We got our keys clipped here. And it does have the same display as the 48 volt X-Class, which is kind of a bummer. Not knowing what the voltage of your battery is versus just having the bars. But at least you know that this bike can go 40 to 75 miles on a charge, which is pretty reassuring in and of itself. So I'm not worried. I do wish it had a better display, but for what you're paying for this bike compared to what other bikes that can perform like this bike cost, I'm not complaining at all. All right, folks. So this little piece is on there to protect the forks during shipping, make sure they stay in place. I guess they help a little bit in preventing the forks from bending during shipping. But this piece takes two 14 millimeter wrenches or sockets. You only get one in the toolkit, so you'll have to use either some pliers or another 14 millimeter wrench that you have around the house. All right, so let's grab our wheel. We've already loosened our nuts a little bit. So on the axle, you get one washer and the main nut, which has like a washer surface on it. You wanna make sure these are together and the fork is going to go in between this right here and then the washer so we're going to go ahead and put this on now and keep going so we're just going to finger tighten these give it a nice tap make sure it's seated all the way on the axle We'll give it one little nudge, one little snug before we tighten it all the way. All right, so let's see what the rotor sounds like. Hopefully it's not rubbing. So we've got a little bit of rub. Okay, folks, so we're gonna have to adjust the caliper a little bit because we've got a little bit of rubbing and I can kind of see that there's more space on one side of the pads than the other. 
Okay, so the way to do this is you want to loosen these two hex keys here. These have little slots that let you move the caliper back and forth. So as you can see now, the calipers can move a little bit. And we're talking about millimeters here, but that's all it takes sometimes to make that noise go away. So, all right, so we got the caliper centered as good as we could. Granted, we won't know how quiet the brakes will be until we bed in the brake pads, which will be our second video. But now when we turn the wheel, at least the, that noise is consistent and it doesn't sound like it's skipping. And the rear is the same. We already checked that one. And same. The key here is the wheel doesn't slow down faster than it should just by its own rotation. So both the front and the back are good. We're going to get the pedals on next and then we're going to flip the bike over, get the handlebars on and we'll almost be done. All right, so I had to like turn myself upside down. All right, so left one counterclockwise, right one clockwise. Well, the best way to tighten these is just to use the crank arm as extra leverage. So we're good with that one there. Let's get the right one on. So excited. All right, pedals are good. All right, so we're gonna flip the bike back over and get the handlebars on, and hopefully we'll be on the road soon. All right, so we got it flipped back over. This thing is beautiful. I cannot wait to ride this thing. The suspension looks so good. I can't wait to figure out how all of this works. We'll have a separate video for that. It says lock and then out in another direction. I'm gonna figure it out by testing and then I'm gonna share with the results with you guys. And the rear suspension looks good. We're trying to determine if it's taller than our 48 volt X classes. It's kind of hard to tell, but it feels the same to me. Lisa thinks it's a little higher, but maybe it is, who knows. So let's go ahead and get these handlebars on. Let's get our screws out. Now, when we put this back on, you wanna make sure that you snug these in any pattern you like, but you wanna make sure you tighten them in an X pattern. So you start here, then here, here, then here. And that makes sure they are tightened evenly on both sides. All right, folks, so we're just gonna snug the handlebars on because we're going to also rotate the stem up a little bit. Another nice feature about this bike is that you can actually loosen this six millimeter hex key here and you can rotate the neck up and down so you can actually have higher handlebars or you can keep them as low as possible like they are now. I'm assuming they come super low for shipping, but we're definitely going to raise them up a little bit because they are more comfortable. Vroom, vroom. Can't wait. Okay, so we've got our handlebar screws nice and snug but not super tight so we can actually rotate it. We're gonna loosen this here now so we can adjust the neck. If you wanna adjust your handlebars, like we wanna adjust our handlebars. All right, so we're not gonna go all the way up, but we're gonna go close to it. So that's a pretty big difference. It may not look like a huge difference, but when you're riding this bike, having to hunch over less is definitely a good thing, or any bike for that matter. But make sure this is nice and tight. You don't want this to slam down on you while you're riding or jumping some curbs. So that's nice and tight. I'm gonna give it a little more snug. I'm good there. So keep this in mind. If you adjust this neck and you go out riding, I would highly suggest taking the tool that you use to tighten this in case it loosens up on you. And it might be a good idea to just keep this in your tool bag when you're out and about. All right, so that feels good. Let's hop on. This is my first time jumping on the X-52. Woo, this feels awesome. Okay, so we're gonna get our handlebars the way we like them. That feels really good. We're gonna go ahead and jump off and tighten them up. 
and we're almost ready to ride. All right, folks, so remember to tighten these in an X pattern. A good way to tell if you over tighten one more than the other is if you notice that one of these bolts is in or out more than the others, then you probably want to take it apart and retighten them evenly. All right, so we got those on. They feel good. Man, it feels weird being on the next class with out a million screens on it. Looks good. All right, so our handlebars are nice and firm. I'm pushing down on them and trying to twist them. They're not moving, so this is nice and tight. We are almost good to go. Next thing we're gonna do is slap the fender on. And we're almost ready to go outside because adventure awaits. So for the fender, you just got a really long screw with two washers and then a nut with a washer. Okay, so for the fender, definitely looks better like this, but you wanna make sure that the longer part, and by longer, I mean if this was the middle, you wanna make sure the longer part is towards the back because the longer you have on the back, the more likely this will deflect mud when you're out there having fun. Now, according to our experience, they don't protect too much. They look really good though, but we get really dirty and the underside of our bike gets really dirty. But without these, we'd probably get a lot dirtier, so they definitely help. And they're included for free with the bike. You don't have to buy them separately or pay extra. All right, we got our fender on nice and even, nice and straight. Let's give our brakes a nice little pump. Yeah, they feel really good. Not spongy, not too firm. Man, that's a good looking bike. Oh, I can't wait to ride it. All right, so next let's get the headlight on. And we got our keys. Now, FYI, keys for aerial riders. These are for the battery and to remove it. They're not to start or power on the bike itself. And I'll show you really quick how to get the battery off. Okay, so you insert the key, turn it counterclockwise, hold it, pull the battery towards you and up a little bit, and it comes right off. 52 volt, 18 amp hours. Oof. Now, if I can get 75 miles on some rides with this bike or even close to it, I am a very, very, very happy camper. All right. All right, so next let's put our headlight on. And first, let's plug in our display. So obviously, it's color coordinated, which makes it easier. And there's a little notch on each connector that lines up. There's also an arrow on the connectors, and you can just line up the arrows. All right, so we're good to go. Let's test it out. Hoo hoo hoo, we got juice, we got display. Looks like we've got about half a battery, three bars which is great because right after this, I'm gonna go out and ride a little bit and I'm gonna do the video for bedding in the brake pads, which is perfect because I'll use a little bit of juice and then I can give it the first 12 hour charge so I can balance the cells. So if you're new to e-bikes, I'm new to e-bikes technically, and you wanna get the best out of your battery, the best rule of thumb is to do three separate 12 hour cycle charges. So for example, I'll go out and ride a little bit today. I'll charge it for 12 hours. I'm going to go out and ride tomorrow. We're actually doing DC e-skate tomorrow. That's going to be a blast. Look out for that video. After that, I'm going to do another 12 hour charge and then I'm going to repeat that one more time. And after I've done three 12 hour cycles, but what that's going to do is it's going to assure that every single cell in the battery gets a full charge and we should see maximum range as a result. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm looking forward to going super, super far on trips and not having to swap batteries or worry about running out of juice, but yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Let's get this headlight on. All right, so for the headlight, it's just two bolts with washers. All right, we got our light on. Unfortunately, a lot of this film was already peeled off before I could do it, but still, we're gonna do it. Yeah. All right, so we've got our headlight on. It's always a good idea to angle it kind of down so it's not in people's eyes and then you can actually see the road ahead of you illuminated. We already put our phone mount on because we're excited to ride. 
tack form it's the only mount to get in my opinion we got to plug in the headlight don't we so just line up your arrows snap that on let's check our headlight okay so to turn the x-class on you want to press and hold this button down here there's two buttons the one on the right is the power button and then you press and hold the plus button and there we go our headlight looks good all right so next we're going to put the pegs on i'm actually just going to put this side on so you guys can see how it works and how it goes on but again the pegs just don't clear the rack on my car when i'm traveling with the bike so i'll be taking these off all right so we've got the peg nice and tight it flips up nicely satisfying click um, i would not recommend an adult standing on these with their full weight but yeah there's the pegs included for free all right fam so the bike is all set it's all together so one thing i noticed when i turned the bike on earlier it's got 1.8 miles on the odometer so i guess that means ar does some type of quality control rides before they send the bikes out so that's a nice thing and as far as the rear suspension i've noticed compared to the stock suspension that comes on the 48 volt x class it's pretty soft and springy in comparison. I could not compress the shock on the 48 volt X class to save my life, the stock one, but this one is nice and springy and we can actually go softer. And yeah, I noticed the difference. So we're gonna keep it there. We're gonna get the bike outside shortly. But before we do that, we're gonna go over the entire bike, make sure everything is tight, make sure everything is secure, make sure it's safe for us to ride. All right, fam. So that's a wrap for the unboxing video. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in and watching it. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this bike and waiting for this unboxing, any unboxing, anything on this bike. So I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I'm able to show you guys what it can do. And I'm looking forward to doing that. So please subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that sub button, hit that like button so you don't miss any of our upcoming 52 volt X class videos. And if we missed anything in this unboxing that you really wanted to see on this bike, please leave that in the comments and we'll do our best to answer that for you. So remember, if you want an Aerial Rider e-bike, use the code Rusty Roads for 50 bucks off of any Aerial Rider e-bike. Let us know what you got in the comments. I'm super excited to know what everybody's riding, what everybody's ordering. Even if it's not an Aerial Rider, let us know. We just want to know. We love e-bikes. You love e-bikes. So yeah, here it is. Batman's X-Class. It's a beautiful bike. So we'll see you on the next video. Next one will be betting the brake pads. And after that, we'll do a range test. And tomorrow we're going on DCE skate with this bike and we're gonna have a blast. So until next time, as always, hang loose, ride tight, and be nice to each other. <laughs>